Mobile HF antennas are too big. And how do I decide what portable NFED half-wave antenna is right for me? This time on Mailbag Monday. What is happening? Thanks for tuning in to Ham Radio Tube. My name is Mike K8MRD. If you have amateur radio related questions for me, shoot me an email. K8MRD at iCloud.com. I would love to hear from you. We've got two great antenna questions today. I love talking antennas, so let's dive right in. This first viewer says, good afternoon, Mike. I love your channel and videos. I have learned so much from them. Flattery will get you everywhere on this channel. <laughs> I'm wanting to put an HF mobile radio in my mid-sized truck. My problem is that I can't seem to find an HF antenna that is smaller than the Washington Monument. That is a big freaking antenna. Imagine if the Washington Monument was an antenna. Oh, I would drive there right now in Poda. <laughs> All of the HF antennas I've looked at for my radio are too tall to leave permanently on my truck. I have a compact antenna for my VHF UHF rig, but I can't find anything reasonable in size to keep on my truck for my HF rig. Any help and advice is greatly appreciated. So the HF bands are long and there's only so much we can do to minimize an antenna while still making it effective. Here is a little Tar Heel 2 that does 80 through 6 meters. This measures with the whip on about 53 inches tall. Conversely, this is my ATOS antenna that also is about the same size, a little bit taller than the Tar Heel, probably about 56 inches tall. As far as I know, that's kind of about as short as you can get. Sure, there are kind of mini hamstick antennas. Regular size hamstick antennas are gonna be taller than these, where the mini hamstick antennas are gonna be a little bit shorter, but they also have a really short whip. So I'm gonna assume we're talking about motorized screwdriver antennas because they're just the easiest to use. So barring the physical size, what can we do about it? Well, the first solution would be to simply remove your antenna every time you want to go into your garage and put it back out, back on every time you go out. I understand that can be quite annoying, but how often are you actually using HF Mobile? Are you the kind of guy that's driving down the street talking on nets and making contacts to POTUS stations all the time? If so, you're probably gonna want your HF antenna on your car all the time, I get it. If not, if you're just the casual, I want an HF mobile antenna on my car for when I go do parks on the air, taking it off and putting it back on isn't gonna be that big of a deal at all. Now, with an antenna like the Tar Heel, you can get, like I have on here, a quick disconnect for the whip. So the whip size, this is the stock whip that comes with the Tar Heel. This little bottom section is the other half of the quick disconnect. So where it's notched here for a wrench, that's the end of the antenna. And the way this works, you can leave the antenna mounted on your truck because this itself isn't high unless you want to put this on the roof of your truck, then you got all kinds of problems. But the way this works, the notch just slides in. It's like a bayonet. It's like a BNC kind of. And there's a big spring in there that's really hard to push down. And that's it. It's locked into place. So now the whip is on the antenna. So you could very easily just take the whip off, leave this on, because you do have to disconnect the power cable when you unscrew this antenna. So that could be a good option. But what if you don't want to deal with any of that? What if you just want to have your antenna up and you just want to use it? I get it. So the first thing that came to mind was the Diamond K9000 antenna mount. It's a motorized mount that will raise and lower your antenna. Here's a video of Mike, Kilo Golf 2 Mike Mike. He was showing me his ATOS antenna at Florida Hamcation this year, and this is a great solution. Now he has his mounted on the back of his car, but you could very easily put this on your truck bed or on the hood of your car and it would raise and lower your antenna automatically with the push of a switch. So I texted Mike this morning as I was coming up with ideas for you, 
And he mentioned that while it is a good mount, there's one big design flaw in it, and it's how it actually keeps the antenna erect, not from the motor, but from the mount itself. So you can see here on the mount where it's circled, the way the mount stays upright is just a friction fit. So you tighten that nut down and just through brute force and friction, that's how that stays up. Now Mike has his kind of going this way towards the back of the car so it, it goes up this way. And he was mentioning that if he got over about 65 degrees, the wind kind of wants to tend to push the antenna back. Well, that's not a very good thing. I suspect if it were pointed vertically, it might not be as big of an issue. But here's a look at how that antenna connects to the mount. And again, it's just friction. It's not like the Diamond K400 mount that actually has like teeth that slide in and really lock in place so that antenna can't wobble. This one doesn't have that and it's not the same size as the K400 so you couldn't even swap out parts. So another solution that Mike presented, this is looking at the bottom of the K9000 antenna mount. So that bracket there with the four bolts, if you took that off and just figured out a way to bolt that mount to like the bed of the truck, like on the, on the sides of the bed of the truck, I mean, you're gonna have to do some ham genuity engineering here, but that would make it more rigid because you're not using that pivot point on the antenna mount where the, the lip mount part of it. So you could have a very solid mount and it's motorized. So you'd get two birds stoned at once and that would be a great solution. I've seen uh, over the years at my ventures to all the ham fests, I love walking around the parking lot and looking at how everyone has deployed their HF and VHF antennas. And, I've seen quite a few guys who have come up with similar ideas like that. Maybe they might be super smart engineers that have figured out ways to make hydraulic motor lifts for their antennas. I've seen a lot of those. I've seen them on campers, especially on big caravans, you know? So that would be without having to do anything to your antenna to take it off or take off the whip, some kind of motorized mount like that to raise and lower the antenna is gonna be my solution for you. Is the K9000 the ultimate solution? I don't know. That's just kind of the idea. So hopefully that helps. If all else fails, unscrew your antenna when you're going into your garage and put it back out, uh, back on when you're leaving. Next, we've got a question about picking the right one. This viewer says, hi, Mike, for QRP portable operation, I have a collection of NFED half-wave antennas, don't we all? I don't have a good way to select the one to use on any specific day. And even if I take more than one, I usually use what I first put up for my entire portable trip. My question is, is there a way that you can recommend and use yourself to decide which one is best or performs best overall? I, like many hams, don't throw much away. <laughs> I may give some away, sell some, or just put them aside. As I write this, I was thinking, all things being equal, 66-ish feet of good wire is just that. The 49 to 1 transformer, coax, and any other circuitry is the variable. With that said, are they all pretty much the same? Well, yeah, they kind of are. All things being equal, a 49 to 1 is a 49 to 1. They're all going to kind of do the same thing. So I've never really had a list of criteria that I've really thought about. But obviously there's certain antennas that I gravitate towards. But I started writing down a list. What are the things that I actually care about in a portable antenna? Well, number one is the physical size of the antenna. How big is it? How, and, and by that, I mean when it's, when it's all, you know, wound up and, you know, not deployed, okay? The physical size of the antenna. Then I look at the wire gauge, is it, uh, a manufactured antenna that you buy, or is it a kit? And also how much that wire weighs. So wire gauge and wire weight, I'm lumping into one category. Third is the physical design of the antenna. And fourth, how does the antenna deploy? 
So for me, when you ask, is there a way that you can recommend and use yourself to decide which one is best or performs overall, I don't really have necessarily a way because my answer is the Pac-10 49 to 1 and Fed Half Wave. I've been using this antenna for years, five or six years now. And I've tried many, 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 many antennas since then. And there's a reason I keep going back to the Pac-10. So let's hop over in the bench and let me explain my four criteria. So here's an assortment of some of my NFED half waves. And you'll notice a lot of these look very similar. Some of them look a little bit different. But the first point would be the physical size. Now, a lot of these are very similarly sized. Here's the Cartena antenna. This is the Pactena NFED half wave, the Xtena, pretty much the same size. Even the Dually and uh, the, the KM4ACK antenna is getting a little bit bigger. And then we have the Chameleon lightweight NFED sloper, which is not that lightweight. Uh, but it is an NFED, so something for QRP, I wouldn't use this antenna. But then we have other antennas like this NFED half wave. This is by uh, Jonathan KM4CFT. This is a really unique design in that you have your BNC connector and all of the bits and bobs of the antenna are right here. Like that's the transformer, that's it. I mean, it's smaller than your finger. And then you have a little wire winder and you're good to go. Same thing here with, uh, this is the K6ARK NFED half wave. Again, same idea, just the transformer on the BNC, put it around a 3D printed winder, you're good to go. Even this 10 tennas, little tiny box, and then you have your bit of wire there wound up. I don't have a wire winder for this, but very, very small and compact. That's number one. How big is the darn thing? Second, wire gauge and really wire weight is another thing I consider. I use primarily a 10 meter Pactana or DX Commander Expedition mast. And the physical size and weight of the wire is very important to me. So you'll notice there's a lot of yellow wire on the table. I personally prefer when I make an antenna to use specifically soda beams, high vis, yellow 26 gauge wire for my antennas because it's strong enough, it's lightweight, it doesn't have a memory and it works great and it's high visibility. So we're giving people who wanna walk into your antenna every chance they have to see it so they potentially don't walk into that uh, antenna. Whereas we'll pick on the Cartena antenna. This is the first iteration, I forget what it's called. This is a little bit thicker. Uh, I can't remember the gauge. What do we have here? This is 22 gauge wire, but it has this silicone jacket. So it's, it's physically bigger by quite a bit and it's a little bit heavier. So that is going to tend to want to weigh down your mast a little bit more. It's negligible, but it's some, something to think about. Then we come to the design. Pactena is the OG of this kind of cross, however you want to call it, antenna winder design with the toroid on it. And as you can see, it's such a good design, literally everyone else copies it. The Cartena, the Xtena, the Chameleon, there's a lot of other antennas out there that, that imitate this design. And George from Pactena, he's the guy that came up with it. So. Uh, I personally prefer a design where I have the toroid on the wire winder so you can wind it up nice and compact. As much as I love 10 tennas, I use two 10 tennas antennas here at home. This kind of design for me, I mean, you can see it's a little messy. Yeah, this has been crammed in a box. Sure, I could put it on a wire winder, but same thing here with the Dooley antenna. And this antenna has quickly shot up to one of my favorite antennas because you have not only a 9 to 1 on one side, you've got a 49 to 1 on the other, but you still have the problem of you have to get a separate wire winder. And I just use some Velcro to keep it attached and everything is fine. Jason KM4ACK came up with a really cool design. You've got the toroid, you've got the wire winder on there, some uh, doingy here to keep everything secure. Chameleon. 
kind of did a very similar thing where again they're copying the design of the pac tenna except they added that uh, doingy there as well to keep everything nice and secure and getting back to antennas like these the km4 uh, cft antenna you don't have that wire winder so you have to figure out some kind of solution this is uh, k6ark's wire winder design i think you can find this on printables or thingiverse but it works fantastic and lastly, we have to think, how do these antennas deploy? Sure, one end is gonna be up a mast or a tree, you know, the end of the antenna, but what do you do about the feed point of the antenna? With antennas like the K6ARK, where you just have a transformer and the BNC on there, incredibly innovative design, but there's no attach point for this. So when I use these kinds of antennas, I find that I just kind of have to hang the transformer over a tree branch, connect the coax, and just kind of let the weight of the coax and the tension of the antenna at the other end keep the feed point where I want it. Whereas, we'll get back to the OG design of the NFED half wave as we know it today. Here on this, you've got a hole in it, so you can put a carabiner or a twisty tie or uh, a rope or whatever, so you can attach it there hang it from a tree or wherever you're mounting it, and then attach your coax there. Similarly, the cartena, you've got a hole there so you can put a, you know, a doingy or some, something to hold it like that. So they have a permanent kind of deployment solution. Same thing with the uh, KM4ACK antenna. You've got a little hole there. You can stick it, you know, you can stick something in there. Hell, you can slide that on a tree branch and just, and just hold it like that. So those are kind of the things that I consider when I'm using an antenna. But for me, the Pactenna checks all of those boxes the best. There's a reason you see me use this antenna more than anything else. Plus, I'm a big fan of giving credit where credit is due. OG design of this style antenna. And now look at everything else that's come out after that. So. Uh, and this is rated for 100 watts. If you want to use QRP, knock yourself out. But pac 10 100 watt antenna versus something like the K6ARK antenna, when it's wound up, it's pretty much the same darn size. You still always have that wire to contend with. The transformer can be physically smaller, but you still got to do something with the wire. And that is why the pac 10 for me is the winner. So I don't mean for this to be a commercial about Pactenna, but after all of the antennas that I've used over the years, all the 49 to 1 end feds, they all perform the same if you get them up. This is what ticks all the boxes for me. I've not used an antenna to date, even though that dually is coming close third in my, in my arsenal, the DX Commander Expedition being the other one. This just does it for me. Nothing has come close to checking off those boxes harder than the Pac-10 and Fed half wave. So I hope that answers your question. Obviously, this is very subjective. You have to figure out what works best for you. But for QRP, maybe some of those really smaller antennas are going to fit your idea of the best antenna. But physical size, weight, this between one of those, there's really not a difference. So them's my answers. <laughs> I hope that helps you. And thanks so much for writing in. Guys, if you have questions for me, shoot me an email, k8mrd at icloud.com. I'd love to hear from you. In the meantime, thanks for watching another episode of Mailbag Monday, and we'll see you next time, 73.